today I thought we'd uh, have something a little bit different and actually go to a rifle. Uh, Manly Kershoner has been one of my interests in the past few years and I picked up a few of them. This is uh, one of the first ones that I got and it is a uh, model 1952 with a uh, factory mounted cowl scope in factory rings. I'm going to give you a quick overall look at it and then we'll look at the individual components. And a quick look here at the action and the cowl scope. You can see it's a typical 1950s stock, at least a typical European 1950s stock. No recoil pad. It's a uh, phenolic plate. This model has a swept back bolt handle to help in operation. It also has a single trigger. And then, as a lot of people have heard, Manlicker, um, a number of other rifles talk about a Manlicker stock, and what they're talking about is the uh, stock all the way down to the end of the barrel, of which this is an original Manlicker with a Manlicker stock, a curving length barrel. Now let's have a closer look up at some of the features of the rifle. As I said, um, the uh, scope is actually a factory mounted cowl scope, which I confirmed with a number of the uh, different ads from the uh, time period. It is mounted in a European quick detachable scope rings. And in the back here, you can see there's a little lever and in the front is also like a uh, pivot point here, which the scope rides on the rifle. Now let's see if I can do this here properly on camera. So you just push in this lever in the back. The scope swings out to the left you swing it out 90 degrees and you can remove your scope. Now the Europeans like being able to take their scopes off of the rifles. They often will store the rifle and scope separately. The scope will be in a, uh, a hard container so that it doesn't get damaged and also a lot of people will actually keep it in the container until they get out into the woods and get hunting. And you can see here this is the surface on the one side that actually fits into the rifle and you can see in the background there's the rifle there's a pin on the one side and then a like a ledge on the other side that fits within this over here and you'll see right here pin goes in you swing it and it engages it and then in the back here there's another section push it in a little bit and it slides in now the Americans do not well don't often anymore they don't really do it at all uh, use the uh, detachable scope mounts one of my concerns was whether or not it would maintain its accuracy fortunately I found out that it does maintain its accuracy very well this cowl scope is a 2.7 see oh I'm sorry 2.3 to 7 power scope another kind of oddity there's 2.3 uh, all the way over to the seven. It's an excellent con condition scope. I don't think we can see the reticle in here, but it is a horizontal wire with a post in the center. And that has worked out very well at the range. Let's have a quick look at the action itself. This is a Manlicker action, uh, as opposed to like a, a Mauser action or some of the other rifles today. It has a forward mounted bolt handle. So, opening it up, go back, it has a bolt release on the left-hand side of the receiver. You push it on the back, unlike the Mauser where you pull out in the front, and out comes the bolt. It is a two-lug bolt. It has an extractor on the side here that slides back and forth. The bolt handle itself actually engages the receiver as well. So, technically, you could probably consider it a two-lug bolt with a safety um, lug at the back. It also has a two position safety on the back. All the way to the left is fire, all the way to the right is safe. And on safe, it actually locks the bolt in position. These actions are known to be extremely smooth and this one is no exception. It's almost like butter as it's, uh, as people would say, sliding on butter as it's running back and forth. This rifle, in addition to the wing safety on the back, wing safety, no trigger pull, safety back on fire, 
Um, whenever they started mounting scopes on them, they decided that they needed something else on the rifle, so they put in a small safety on the right-hand side of the receiver, which blocks the trigger, and that's very effective, and with the scope mounted, that's really what you need to use. It does have functional and very well-made sights. It has two different leaves, one for 100 yards and one for 300 yards. All of that is in excellent condition as well. Going down the barrel, you can see that it's a hooded front sight. A lot of people will take the hoods off, so sometimes it's hard to find the hoods as well. Fortunately, in this rifle, it came with it. This rifle also has a single trigger as opposed to the set trigger. The single trigger was much preferred by the American shooters, so you'll see that a lot of the rifles that were brought into the United States will have a single trigger. And I have some of the set trigger ones as well, and I would say that I actually do like the single trigger a little bit better, even though the trigger for the... Um, uh, the set trigger are more traditional for this type of rifle. Seeing if I can get a, a good shot there. The receiver ring um, gives the patent date and also gives the uh, man liquor shown her name and the model 1952 and the caliber, which in this case is 30 out 6. One of the features of this rifle is a rotary magazine. The rotary magazine places the cartridge directly in line with the chamber and so that's one of the things that uh, attributes the um, smooth action of the rifle. Now I have five cartridges here. I'm just going to show you one of the features of this without chambering any rounds. Let me grab these. So on some of the earlier ones, like I have a 1908, it has actually a stripper clip bridge there. In the 1952s, they dispense with a stripper clip, clip uh, bridge and you have to singly load them. So let me just throw in five rounds. They go in very easily. They fit into the spool magazine. Now you'll know in a lot of the other rifles they have a swing down floor plate like the Mausers and the Winchesters and also Remingtons so that you can unload your cartridges. This one has an interesting feature in that you can unload all of your cartridges at once but you don't actually do anything with the floor plate. That always stays in place. And what you do is you come up here and push on this button on the right hand side of the receiver and that releases your spring pressure and your cartridges pop out. If I wasn't at this odd angle I could catch all five of them. And voila, we are empty again. Let's drop that guy out. Put our cartridges over here where it's nice and safe again. Nothing in the chamber. And we are safe again. So that's the Man Liquor Schoner. Just wanted to have a quick look at that. And I've uh, taken it to the range numerous times and I've actually used it hunting as well. And I found with the uh, factory Federal Ammunition 150 grain and 180 grain, I have actually been getting most of the time sub zero or sub one inch groups at 100 yards. So considering the vintage of the rifle, and I know I read books all the time that say that, you know, the modern rifles, um, because of their tolerances, are more accurate than the old ones. Well, this one seems to disprove that. Plus, a lot of people go on about the man liquor stock causing inaccuracies of the rifle as well. Again, that is not proven in this one. So, thank you for looking, and thank you for watching another one of my videos. I'll see if I can do some more of the... Um, rifle videos. I just wanted to show a quick view of this man liquor Shoner. And this is Snowball 042 and out.